Tall here, and I usually don't do this. I don't try to inspire you guys with Instagrammable inspirational quotes. I don't try to bombard you with that sort of thing. But very recently, I got back into the game of stand up. I haven't done stand up in about eight years, eight long years, ever since the peak of Peter Chow, which was in 2010, I would like to say. A lot of my focus went to creating videos, vlogs, skits, sketches, stuff that I can manipulate in the edit, so to speak. But as much of a following that I garnered for piecing together skits and sketches, I really wanted to challenge myself again, see whether I can actually stand isolated on a stage and make people laugh at my jokes. <laughs> Hi. But getting on stage and making a massive amount of people laugh at your jokes is really different from me filming a video. If it's me filming a video, I usually sit by myself in a room, I think of my jokes ahead of time, and I execute them multiple times through multiple takes. When you guys see the final product, obviously you don't see the multiple takes, you see the best take. But with stand-up, you only have one take. You screw up, you screw up, and that's it. A lot of the times I like to tell myself that, hey, am I actually really funny, or is it just the edit that's funny? And when people ask me, hey, why did you stop making Peter Chow videos? It's because to me, it wasn't really that challenging anymore. And for the longest time, I told myself, hey, I wanna get back on stage, but my fear was that I wouldn't be funny. This is a very realistic fear that many comedians have. And hey, even many YouTubers have. A lot of YouTubers, when you see them in person, they're more awkward than you are. And I think that was the case for a lot of the times when people actually came up to me. So very recently, I got back on the stage in Vancouver at the Comedy Mix to work out some new material. It wasn't perfect. There were many things watching back that I would have fixed and that I will fix for upcoming sets. But this is part of the learning process and I want to share this with you because I know that many of you who have ambitions, that ambition very often is overwhelmed by your fear. And I'm telling you right now, if you have ambitions for anything that you do, the last thing that you should do is let your fear overcome that ambition. But anyway, I feel that it's very important to share my process with you, to share how it's gonna get better. And uh, yeah, let me know if you want me to share more of my sets with you and I will definitely do that as much as I can. Yes, thank you, thank you. Mmm, hello, Peter Chow here. Wow, yes. So many Asian people in Vancouver now. Ugh, yikes. Damn, you know, it's just, you know, it's just not like I hate Asians, I'm Asian myself. It's just the thing is, is that people look at me differently, right? People look at me and they go, what type of Asian are you? Huh? So many different types of Asians here. Are you Korean? Are you Vietnamese? Are you Japanese? Are you Taiwanese? No, bitch, I'm the original. I'm Chinese. <laughs> huh? Come on, I'm Chinese. And then they have the gall to ask me, why are you here? Bitch, why are you here? Huh? The reason, the reason why I'm here is because the same reason why all the other, you know, Asian people are here. You know, because we got the A- on the overall grading school average. And we didn't want to tarnish our family reputation. That's the thing. You know, that's the crazy thing. You know, the first time, my mother's reaction, when I brought home that report card, and she looked at me, and she go, is that an A-? minus? <laughs> Is that an A minus? You can't get an A minus in China. Getting an A minus in China is like getting an F everywhere else. Those are white people grades. <laughs> Those are grades that white people get when they try their absolute hardest. You can't do that, huh? The only solution I see to this is I'm going to have to send you to North America, Peter Child, where you can make the white people look stupid. <laughs> They're gonna look at you like the smartest person alive. Huh? You're so smart, Peter Chow, and that's, by the way, that's the story of immigration. Hands up, immigration. Yeah. I was so confused, you know, when I, when I arrived here at first. You know, I look around, spicy seafood restaurant, bubble tea house, dim sum place. Like, did I miss my fright? <laughs> Like, where the hell am I? Damn. And then I saw a sign that said, Welcome to Richmond. Huh? Oh, I fit right in. It almost feels like I never left home. Huh? So many yellow people here. Huh? I came here for the white people. Huh? 
Put your hands up if you're white. That's right. That's right. I. I rough the white people. You guys got it figured out. You know, you guys got restaurants named after you. You guys got, I don't know, cities named after you. I'm talking about the white rock. I'm talking about the white spot. <laughs> These are places named for you. That's crazy. Huh? I went to White Rock the other day and I'm like, oh, this is where old white people go to die. <laughs> And then went to white spot and it's just fat people and kids. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. You guys do not give up. <gasps> I love it. I love it. And oh my God, you know, the white girl. I love the white girl. Being a fresh off the boat Asian, are you kidding me? And seeing all that big, thick white ass, that big, thick yoga white ass. That's why me and the black people, you know, we, we, we get it. We connect. We rough them, you know? Me and the Brax, we understand the, you know, this, I mean, the market of the white ass has been monopolized by the black people for so fucking raw. I feel like I'm late getting into the game. I want some of that white ass. I want to get some of that. Oh, oh. Speaking of black people, how many black people here to lie, huh? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, you too. W what's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Uriah. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! You're so black, I could not even see you. Right? It's crazy. <laughs> oh fuck! What's your name, sir? What? What? Well, man, that caught me off guard. That's really brag. I thought it was gonna be Deshaun Williams or something like that. Shit, Sungai Ma. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Sungai Matongo. Huh? I just want to give you all my money to invest in some sort of obscure Nigerian cryptocurrency. Huh? Oh, you and I. You and I. Oh, man, we are going to be friends. Oh. But I feel bad, you know, for the black people sometimes because black people are the only types of people that white people are racist towards. You know, I'm talking about the, you know, you guys heard about the H&M ad. You know, what were they thinking? You know, the little black boy with the, with a shirt that said, coolest monkey in the jungle. <laughs> are you kidding me? Coolest monkey in the jungle? What, what, a, what the wave of controversy. What about for the Chinese people? I was kind of jealous. I want my own shirt. So now that I have a live crowd and live feedback, I want to ask you, I'm going to start my own merch. It's going to have a little Chinese boy and the Chinese boy is going to wear a shirt and the shirt is going to say, realist chink in the armor. <laughs> All right? <laughs> you guys are so racist for rapping. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much. Thank you. You guys have been an excellent class. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Chow, ladies and gentlemen. Go do what you want to do and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Until next time, stop drinking the heater and start drinking the bubble tea. Chow, oh, sigh, mother.